where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Find your way to 2 Corinthians this morning, chapter 3. Come on in, stranger. Let's go. Let's welcome Jesus in the house this morning. You know, I'm having doubts about some. There's some of you smiling, and there's some of you that's frowning, and there's some of you wondering, do I even, am I even supposed to be alive? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And, 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 if, and if you got the Spirit of the Lord in your life, then you're freed. And, and I pray today, if you don't have the Spirit of the Lord in your life, that, that you will get it today. Because it is too far and too late in life to not be freed and to be held captive from all the things that Satan wants us to be held captive to. You know, freedom is great. Freedom is wonderful. Freedom is just awesome when you know what you've been released from. If you don't know what you've been released from or you've been untangled from or you've been set free, if you don't know what you've been set, then you don't know what freedom is. And this is all scripture and we'll see this today. You know, our subject today is about the spirit of freedom. And every one of us needs to be freed. We need to be freed in our hearts. We need to be freed in our minds. We need to be freed in our soul because Satan has come this morning to do one thing. Kill, steal, and destroy. But what he wants to do is he wants to take your joy away. And, and, and that's, that's far, far from what God wants. God wants me and you to be joyful. God wants me and you to have so much joy in our life, and he don't want us to be held captive by Satan. But Satan, he's good at his job. He's very, very good. You know, a spirit of freedom comes from God, but a spirit of bondage comes from Satan. We're going to release all spirit of bondage today. You're not going to be held captive. If you're being held back today, if you're being held back from worshiping God, if you just cannot come to service today to worship God and to have the spirit of God in your life, there's some bondage that's got to be cut loose and let go. All of us has got it. Me, I, let me start with the head. Let me start with the head. And then it, it starts from the head and then it filters out and goes down to somewhere. All pastors committee, stand up. All pastors committee, all ministers, Wade's already standing. All right, now any Sunday school teacher, anybody that's got anything to do with kids, stand up. It starts with us. It starts with us. The ones that send, the ones that, that, that y'all can sit back down. No, stand back up. No, sit back down. I'm sorry. Y'all mind very well. You know, if there's no freedom, if there's no freedom in the leadership of the church, then there's not going to be any freedom in the congregation. So, the, so it starts at the top, and that's why I ask you to stand up, because our freedom, we have to be free. And I forgot to ask all musicians and the singers stand up. Now musicians and singers stand up. Some of y'all got to stand up twice. Yeah. You see, we have to be freed. We have to be free. There can't be no, no bondage in us. There can't be anything that entangles and holds us back to keep us for relationship because we're illustrating and we're demonstrating and we're being, we're being the head and being in the leadership of the church to, to fit the field route. So today, when we leave here today, and, and every one of you that stood up along with me this morning, we got to make sure that there is nothing that holds us back. There's nothing that holds us captive because what we are you're only going to be as good as your leader. That means the pastor, right? But see, that goes somewhere else too. You're the leader in your life. So you're only going to be as good as what you are. We're only going to be freed from, from what we want to be freed from. You know, I'll give you a description about freedom. You know, there was, a, there was this guy that... It, his job was to sit on the side of the street and solicit money. Y'all love them kind of people, right? To take money. Come give me money. Give me money. But this guy had, I mean, he had it going on now. He had taken 12 quail, 12 quail, and he, and he trained them quail to walk around in a circle. He would tie a string on each one of them's leg, just one, one leg, not both of them, because they, they'd be walking around like this. 
but he tied just one. One string on one quail's leg, and, had, and, 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 and as you tied them on there, he trained them. They would walk in a circle all day long. As he went and sat out on the sidewalk, he had tied a string on each one's leg from one leg to the other, and they would get out there on the sidewalk, and all day long they would walk around in a circle, walk around in a circle all day long. People would walk by and say, man, that's fin- that guy, I, I, I like that, and, and they would throw money in his can. He had trained he had trained those quail, those 12 quail, and they'd walk around in a circle, walking around in a circle. Well, he was this bird lover. This man, he just, he hated every day he went that way to work. He would walk by and he would see this, this guy that had these quail sitting on the sidewalk and they was walking in a circle all day long, all, and he just could not stand it. Well, one day this guy decided, I'm going to sell these quail. I'm going to sell them. And and this guy found out, the one that hated to see him there walking in a circle all day, he said, I'm going to buy them. And, and so he went up, he said, how much you want for them? And the guy told him, said, I'll take this amount of money. But there's a condition. There's a condition to whoever buys them. He said, I don't care what it is. I, I don't care. I'm going to buy the quails. I want them. He handed him money. And once he handed him money, you know, then, then the owner of them says, uh, the condition is that you have to set them free. Oh, the new owner, he just smiles. <laughs> you just made my day because that's exactly what I was intending to do anyway. Thank you, Jesus. He bought them. He walks off down the street. And he cuts the string on each one of them's leg, and they set them down there in the ground, and all of a sudden they just continue to walk in a circle. Just kept on walking in a circle. He says, oh, free now. There's no string holding you back. There's nothing holding you back now. Just chew on it. And he walk up in and he would chew them and they would move over a little bit and they would walk in a circle. Finally, he run up in the middle of them and he just shoot them off and they flew off and went across the sidewalk and he got over and they started walking around in a circle. The old owner, the man that had trained them, he was just laughing himself to death. He was just laughing and laughing. He just, and finally he gave up and he said, hey, he said, you got to retrain them. You got to retrain them. You see, Satan has came to me and you and he has trained me and you to be held captive from the things that we are held captive by. You see, we got to be retrained. This morning, we got to stop marching around in a circle. We got to quit marching around in a circle of our past sins, of our past faults, of our past hurts. And we got to move on and we got to get ready to fly what God has called me and you to do. We got to fly in the spirit and it's time to cut Satan loose and retrain our minds and retrain our hearts to to know that God's called us for a purpose and it is not to live in the past hurts, in the past of pains, in the past of sufferings, in the past sins. Now you got two options today. I'm talking to Rex. I'm not preaching to nobody except Rex. You can leave out of here captive today, or you can leave out of here freed today. Yes, two, whichever one. Rex, you can leave here today. You can leave here today, Rex. You can leave out of here captive to a past hurt or past sin or past memory of something, or you can leave out of here freed and freed indeed. Let's look into our scripture in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiling faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with the ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Father, as we know that you are the Spirit, today... We cut the strings. We cut ourselves loose from the bondage. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And when we got the Spirit of the Lord in us, then we are freed and we're freed indeed. And there's nothing that we should be calling back to of our past. But it's all the future. In the name of Jesus. And amen. You know, we're... We should, be in, we should be doing what God intended for me and you to do. And living in the past and acting in the past and conducting ourselves in the past has nothing to do with where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom because it's cut us loose, cut us loose, cut us loose. 
I find myself even at times that I go to reflect him back and I want to reflect back to something in the past of my life. And then I have to catch myself just that quick, say, whoa, Rex, are you living in the past or are you going to live for me in the future? And, you know, when I wiped your sins away, I wiped them away and I freed you from that. And I wiped them away and made your, made your soul clean, white as snow. I'm not going to, when I cast your sin away, I cast it so far and so deep. Some of us are tired and tied down today because by the memories of our past sinful life. And, and, and we're so tied down by the memories of our past hurts and we're tied down by the memories of our past failures and we're tied down by the memories of our, of our uh, past unforgiveness. And that is a major, major role about our unforgiveness. We cannot forgive of the past. We have problems forgiving what's in the past. We have problems forgiving what was hurt us in the past. We have problems for, for going on and, and saying, you know what? I'm going to carry this hurt the rest of my life. I'm going to carry this pain the rest of my life. I'm going to carry this sorrow the rest of my life. I'm going to carry it with me. I'm going to carry it with me. God did not tie the string around your past. He didn't tie the string around, uh, around our leg or our neck or our, or our arm of the past. God did not tie that down. As a matter of fact, God freed us from that church. God didn't tie us down and say, you remember your past, you remember your past. You remember ever hurt that you've been hurt. You remember ever wrong that you've been done. You remember all this. You remember it. You remember it. That ain't what God does. But I can tell you where it come from. It come out of the pits of hell from Satan himself. It come from Satan because that is not what God intended. In Acts 3, Acts 3 and 19, he says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repent. He says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. So everything of the past is wiped out. Uh, but preacher, you don't know what kind of past I have. You don't, know, you don't know what kind of sinful life I live. You don't know this, preacher. You don't know it. And I don't need to know it, but I know that God knows it. And I know God freed you from it if you repented and asked forgiveness of it. And said, God, wipe this away. I, 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 I'm sorry for what I've done. I know I don't want to do that no more. And I know God wipes it away because he said that he did. But we want to live in this. We're made to be free, yet we are captive to ourself because it's self that places it. Satan comes and uses you. Satan comes and uses you. Uses when I say you, I'm talking to myself and saying, you know, Satan uses my mind to hold me captive because Satan likes to mess with a man's mind. Oh, he loves to mess with a man's mind. There are more. Did you know the day that there are more unhappy people in America than there has ever been before? There's more unhappy people in America today. And, and, and we're wondering why. Why is there so many unhappy? Why is it so many people? You know what? We make more money today than any past generation has ever made we make more today than they did years and years to go years ago we 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 work less harder we physically don't have to work as hard today as what they did generations in the past we don't work as hard we have more time off from our jobs than any past generation has we have we have accumulated more stuff than any past generation We've accumulated more and more stuff than our past generation. We travel more. We live, we're living longer today. We're, we're, uh, we have access to more foods today. We have, I, I mean, this, this, it goes on and on and the list goes on and on. We're even more educated today than we have ever been before. But there are so many people who are unhappy. We're unhappy who we are. We're unhappy who we are because you know why we're unhappy? Because we are not freed. We're not freed. We have let Satan come to hold us down and keep us in captivity with all of this. We're still unhappy with our past. And we, what seems to be the problem? What is the problem? What is our problem today? 
It can't be our quality of life because, you know, we got a better quality of life today. You know, we, we got ways of fighting sickness. We got ways of, of fighting hunger. We got ways of fighting obesity. We got ways of fighting when you're not, not eating enough. There's, there's ways to fight against any and everything. And you got more money. You got more money. I mean, the, your paycheck, you, you bring home more money today than any, any I mean, you got more. You, you're not living, I mean, you just have, we got more, but we're living unhappy happy we're just so unhappy you know where and what the problem is why there are so many problems and why we're so unhappy where is the problem at it's in our toe amen what's our toe got to do with it nothing (laughs) nothing our toe ain't got nothing to do with it the reason we're unhappy and the, what the problem is, is it's in our mind. It's in our head. Our head is the reason that we're unhappy. Why? Because we have chosen to be this kind of people. Just like the birds. Just like the birds. What they were trained to do, they were trained to go around in a circle because that string was tied there. And even when the string was cut loose, they continued to walk around and go into this circle, to go in the circle, and to go in, into this circle, and to go in the circle. And even when the string was cut, they went around in the circle because they were trained. And we have trained our minds. You know what? I want things like I want it. I want to do like I want to do. I want it this way. I want it that way. And if you hurt me, I'm going to continue to hold a grudge. If you hurt me, you do this or you do that, it's still going to be this way. I got to have it my way. I'm going to be like Burger King, it's my way. I want my pickles on it. I want my mayonnaise on it. I want this. I want that. I don't want this on it. I don't want that. You know, we have become into ourselves a want, 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 want. And the way that we want things, the way we want things, but the way we and you want things ain't the way that God wants things. We got to retrain ourselves. Retraining ourselves. So it comes to this the problem is in our head, just like those birds. You know what? I've never joined the armed services, but I've talked to so many people that do, and I've talked and, and seen so many people that went to the armed service, and the ones that's in the armed service, who has been in the armed service that's in here, the first thing that they do is they retrain you. Everything that was put in you, they wipe out. It's just like you carrying your computer to a computer technician, and, and, they, and they wipe out the hard drive. They wipe out everything that was in it and put everything back in there new. And that's what the army, that's what they do is they they go inside of your brain and everything that your mom, every, you know why they use your mom and dad? And they, I've never been in there, but they say, I mean, they really cuss you. They just talk about how filthy and make you angry and mad and angry and mad and angry and mad and angry and mad and angry and mad. And they use your family, they use your friends and everything that your friends and family has put into your mind. They wipe that out and they get your mindset into something total brand new that what they want in your mind. Because everything that was put in there is totally different from what they want in. And so it's the same thing Satan does. Satan tries to take out everything that God's already put inside of us. What the, you know, you were born, you, 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 you were born to love. You were born of love. You were born from God to continue to, to love and love thy neighbor and love thy brother as thyself and to show our love. But, but how, can we, how can we turn that love that God instilled in us? You, you know, do, do you have, growing from a baby, do you have any problem loving your mom? You loving your dad? You know, the first thing that you do is a mom takes and nurses her child A dad is there for protection and a child grows and grows and grows and automatically already loving. A child can recognize the voice of the mom right after it's born because the mom is continuing to read and to talk to that child and the voice of the, even though it's inside the womb, the child can still hear the sounds of the mother and the father. The more you talk, the more you talk. Well, you know what? Those sounds of our father is already in our brain, already in our heart, already inside of us. But then Satan comes along and tries to destroy that. You know, a coach, the football coach once said that the only failures on his team were the minds that were not willing to be retrained. The only failures on his team was, was the minds that was not willing 
to be retrained. And so we all have to be trained. And the coach would not, he went on and, and, and said that you're, you're only going to advance by the ability of your mind. What is holding you back today? What is it that holds you back today to advancing to God? What is it that holds men you back today the way the Spirit of the Lord is that we don't have any freedom? What is it in our lives that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, but we just don't seem to have any freedom? God, I don't seem to have any freedom. I still I still hate people. God, I still don't love people. God, I, I still hold grudges against people. God, I, 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 still, I still make them, I want to make them suffer because of, of what they caused in my life. God, I want, them to, I want them to have pain. I want them to go through the same pain that I'm going through. God, why am I not happy? Because you said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that's exactly what God wants me and you to know, that there is freedom and freedom in the Spirit of God. And we need the Spirit of God in our lives. We need to feel Fill our lives with the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit direct us, Lord Jesus. Man, you know, it's easy. This is hard. It hurts, but we have to hear it. Rex, I'm speaking to you, so I'm speaking to me before I speak to you. God's speaking to Rex before he speaks to you. You know, when we got past hurts, we can lay in that hurt, and we can lay in that hurt, and we can lay in that hurt. But you know what? what what's at the end? Hurt? <laughs> it don't matter how long you lay in the hurt. You can lay like the man at the pool. He laid there for year after year after year, unhealed, 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 and not able to walk, and not able to come out of his, uh, had a, out of his funk that he was laying there, that he was crippled. But as soon as Jesus came by, then all of his life was better. You know, I can lay in the hurt and the pain. I can have grudges. I can hold a grudge and hold a grudge and hold a grudge. You know, I can hold a grudge for the next 40 years. But you know what? In the next, at the end of the 40 years, what I'm going to have? Still hurt of holding a grudge. <laughs> but I want to be freed from that. I don't want to hold no grudge against nobody. I, I, I don't want to have any hurt against anybody. I, I don't want none of this in my life. Because I want to be freed and freed and freed. And as a matter of fact... The door is going to open up one day. And if I still got all this hurt, this pain, this suffering, the door is going to be shut. Woo! Oh, I, I, God, if you'll open it back up, I'll, I, I'll forgive them. You know, this unforgiveness that we, that we have in our lives that we cannot go on. You know, we can lay in water in your past hurts and pains. And you know what? When you get up from there, unless you have got the Spirit of God in your life, then the pain and the hurt still going to be there. We got to have free, and we got to be freed and freed and in Galatians 5 and 1. Galatians 5 and 1, and it says, It is for freedom. Oh, my. It is for freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has held us captive. Stand firm then, and do not let anybody come in and burden you again. That's what it says. <laughs> It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Amen. Don't let... Don't let Satan come in and tie the string around you. Don't let Satan come and hold you down. It is by the freedom of Christ that he has set us free. We set ourselves free. And we set ourselves up for failure. We set ourselves up for failure in so many ways because of our wants and our needs and our, our, I, 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 our, our, our. This morning, do not, you do not have to be held captive. You do not have to be held back. The only thing that's holding you back and keeping you free today is what? Your mind. Your mind. This is what we have to do today, church. Let go and let God. Let go and let God. Because he is far, far more capable than what me and you are. He is far, far more capable. Far, far more capable. Y'all know I was a musician? Y'all didn't? I'm a magician too. 
Abracadabra. D.L. Moody stood before a congregation one time. And he had a glass that was half full of water. And he asked, how do you get the air out of the glass? I asked you that question this morning. How do you get the air out of the glass? The bottom half of this glass is water and the top half of it is air. How do you get the air out of the glass? Some people say, well, you suck all the air out of it. Well, if you suck all the air out of it, then you're going to make the glass collapse. Then you're going to do all some crazy things. You know, you, you, how do you get the air out of the glass? And D.L. Moody asked him, how do you get the air out of the glass? And, and finally he demonstrated. <laughs> See, I told you I was a magician. Y'all tell me when. It still got air in it. That's how you get the air out of the glass. So, if there is any air in your life, if there is any hurt in your life, if there is any grudge in your life, if there is any pain in your life, if there is any anger in your life, if there is any unforgiveness in your life, you know what? Until you do what this demonstrates, it is going to stay in your life. And there is only one way to get it out of your life. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So what you got to do is every place in your life that there is hurt, there is pain, there is unforgiveness, there is all of this garbage that Satan has come and put in you. You were not made to hate me. I was not made to hate you. You was not made to hate your brother. You was not made to be at all against your brother. You was made to love them. So the only way to get all of this emptiness out of your life is to put the Holy Ghost and put the freedom of God in your life church that's the only way that's the only way that it will get out in other words let me break it down into Rex English put more God in your life just put more of God in your life then, then you know what? If you put more of God in your life, then you won't have the you won't have the time. You won't even have the thought of thinking negative about somebody else. Because I want you today to leave out of here with the Spirit of the Lord, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I want you to leave out of here free today. I don't want you held captive by nothing. I don't want anybody to have anything that holds us back. We got a time in our life that we need to be praising God. We need to be standing up for God we need to be worshiping instead of holding somebody back we need to be freeing them and cutting them loose church man there was this lady that she had a canary in a cage I used to have a bird in a cage until my wife let it go yeah she did. I had a bird captive. I had it in a cage, and Pam, just like that bird lover, she come by and let him go. But that's all right. My mother-in-law come through and replaced it with two. Woo! <laughs> and then I let him go. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lady who had a canary in a cage, and, and she decided to set it out on her porch one day. And she set it out on the porch and, and to let it have some fresh air. And all of a sudden, a mockingbird come flying by and flew up there to the cage and asked the canary, says, uh, what is your purpose? The canary says, my purpose is to eat seed. For what? Answered the mockingbird. Well, uh, so I can be strong. And for what? The mockingbird said. So I can sing, answered the canary. So I can sing. For what for? 
The mockingbird asked again. So you, because, uh, so when I sing, I get more seed. And so the mockingbird says, so you, so you eat in order to be strong, so you can sing and so you can get more seed to eat. Yes, said the canary. Then the mockingbird said, well, there's more to you than that. If you'll follow me, I'll help you find your purpose in life. But you have to get out of the cage. And you see, God didn't intend for me to be held in a cage. God didn't intend for me and you to be held back from past hurts, from past faults, from past failures, from past sin, from past, past, past. God didn't intend for me and you to be held captive by that. Matter of fact, God wants you to be free. And if you'll just get out of your cage, if you'll just get out of the funk that you're in, if you'll just get out of that place where you just cannot forgive a person for what a person has done you wrong, if, you know, if you'll just get past all of that and let God be God in mine and your life, then there is freedom in the Lord. And where there's freedom in the Lord, you will be freed and freed indeed. You see, you got a choice today, Andy, if y'all want to come on. You got a choice today. You can either be this glass with air in it, about half full. You can either leave out of here today like that. You can leave out of here today aggravated. I, uh, you can leave out of here mad. You can leave out of here with hurt. You can leave out of here with pain. You can leave out of here with unforgiveness. You can leave out of here today with a lot of different things, but, but that's not what God intends. God intends for you to leave out of here today with freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. God wants me and you to be freed and freed indeed. He wants me and you to be freed and freed indeed. As he said in Galatians 5 and 1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. What is it that holds you back? What is it that holds you back? What is it that holds you back and continually you remember your past sins? Oh, preacher, I can't. I've lived, so, I've lived a rough life. I did this, I did that, preacher, I, I live. When God frees you, he frees you indeed. He sets you free. As you stand to your feet this morning, I ask you, you can leave out of here half empty or you can leave out of here full. You can leave out of here with that, that emptiness in your life is where that, you know, there was only emptiness because it wasn't full of God. It wasn't full of water. They was, this glass was not only empty. It was half full, but there was emptiness in it because it had not been filled up. You know what? If there's any empty in your, emptiness in your life, it's because God Almighty is not continued to... He, he, it's, it's not, there's still room for growth. I want to continue to fill my life where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. I beg you today that you leave out of here free and free today. I beg you today, don't you let anything hold you back. I beg you today, don't you have another string holding you. None. It's time to be free, church. It's time to be free, church.